What we're going to try and do this morning is show you what we believe is a startling vision of the future of technology. What happens when you take what used to be hundreds or thousands of servers that used to be rendered, used to be used to render movies, and reduce them to a single chip? What we're going to do is show you how new technologies are going to change both the video and the movie world, and how forever those two will start to be fused. Now picture, if you will, if we give developers the ability to create environments that look as real as the world that you and I live in, and pair that with some new and innovative ways of interacting with the games, and you've got the potential for creativity that simply hasn't existed before. The, the director now with Cinema 2.0 can make these changes in real time and interact with his own movie to explore creative avenues. He can uh, plot points, character movement, camera angles, lighting. H how many of us have always wondered wh how we could change plot points by, by changing certain key elements in a story, even in our own lives? What if I had not made that decision? You know? And I can tell you that this convergence that we're talking about, this Cinema 2.0, is really the holy grail of game development. That is, being able to create games that have that visual fidelity of today's feature films. It's not a stylized version of, of, of his aesthetic, but his aesthetic now is translated directly into that game. This is a revolutionary uh, commitment in, of, of technology changing the level of expectation. With breakthroughs and graphics that AMD is going to talk about today, we've delivered one teraflop of visual computing power. That's what makes Cinema 2.0 possible. Now, we went to talk to uh, some game developers, the folks that are actually responsible for making games. We wanted to get an idea from them uh, where they saw the future in terms of the realism that we're talking about in Cinema 2.0. Hi, my name is Paul Wedgwood. I'm the owner of Splash Damage and uh, creative director on our projects. Hi, my name is Gerard Yelly. I'm the CEO and president of Crytek. Hi, I'm Chris Kingsley, CTO and co-founder of Rebellion. Hello, my name is David Braben. I'm chairman of Frontier Developments Limited. Hi, I'm Marcos Mackey. I'm a development director and co-founder at Remedy Games. The holy grail of computer games is to get movie quality rendering and graphics in our games. Of course they can't do this because movies get 45 minutes an hour to render a single frame where we have to do it real time. Today uh, visual uh, animation and simulation is sort of the, the weak parts of the chain. I think we're still at least 10 years off from getting to that level of quality. I think we're, we're probably five years away from where you really have to think is that video or is that CG. So Hollywood does it already today and games will do it appro approximately in three to five years too. That's at least what we hope. We will need faster hardware. If we don't have really, really good hardware, you know, we're not going to be able to make the games look as good as people expect. You know, the, the message from the video game players is that even they believe that photorealism, that, that uh, indistinguishable difference between real and virtual is years away. My name is Cameron Hatzman. I am 17 years old from Dallas, Texas. I've been playing PC games for about six years now. I'm Caliber from the Fragdolls. I'm part of an all-female professional video gaming team. They're trying to look realistic, but they don't quite have it yet. Like Computer games the way it is now to the, you know, the movie realism. Uh, another 10 years. So I'd give it like another four or six years before we get real into like graphically photorealistic quality gaming. We don't believe it's seven years away. We believe it's today. I want to introduce you now to another pioneer. His name is Mr. Jules Erbach. And I'm just going to show you uh, one image that represents what this technology can do. Let's show that slide. So I don't know if you can tell the difference between a photograph of Thomas Hayden Church and a CG Thomas Hayden Church that's been scanned in and rendered as a CG model using the light stage. Because really, it's an experimental technology that's, up until this point, has been in the laboratory. And we're very pleased to announce today that we're forming a company called LightStage that will take this technology and the team that built it and bring this into the practical world of films and video games. Uh, but the LightStage captures so much data that you, you may have trouble believing that. So let's just play this clip and, and take a look. There you go. That looks pretty real to me. Uh, anything that goes in there, whether it's a plant or a person, just gets scanned in, like that, like taking a Polaroid snapshot of something and, and, and having that asset instantly. You know, we don't necessarily now have to go and rig her facial muscles and try to figure out how all that works. That's captured 
in full motion on the light stage. And that's really revolutionary. And it's also a lot cheaper and a lot faster than anything else that we've ever had as, as, as artists or as video game developers or as filmmakers. We can render that in real time. And part of our collaboration with AMD has been to tackle that problem. So what you're seeing here is basically the mouse is changing the lighting on this head in real time. And this is not a photo. I mean, this, this is just a highly detailed CG model. As it moves, the lighting can change. And when you think about a filmmaker who doesn't have to worry about this, the lighting on his set anymore, they could just scan in a character on LightStage and then just do all the lighting afterwards. Even the camera work can be done afterwards. That's remarkable. Uh, clearly, there's no reason, given that we have this technology now, that every single video game character can't look as good as this. This can be rendered on the 4,800 cards that are in these machines. Uh, it doesn't quite do it justice to watch the light stage in action. These lights are all blinking on and off so quickly, the human eye can't really see. It just looks like they're all on. But if you slow down the high-speed cameras, you can actually see the, um, how the light stage works. It essentially is capturing how every single one of those lights uh, individually bounces off of this character. And then there's a lot of software that takes that data and turns it into those realistic characters that you've seen in these videos. Uh, that LightStage is partnering with ImageMetrics, a wonderful company that develops amazing facial capture animation software. Uh, so ImageMetrics, combined with LightStage, gives us a pretty remarkable result, uh, which we're going to show you. Let's just play that video and uh, take a look at Emily. ImageMetrics is a markerless performance-driven animation company. We specialize in high-quality facial animation for video games and films. The thing that's driving her face can come from any one of us. It can come from any kid with a webcam because ImageMetrics software takes just regular video and tracks every single muscle in your face. You match that to the LightStage data set and you get, you get this. So the possibilities are amazing. Let's just think about virtual worlds populated with characters like Emily driven by, let's say, a webcam that can make these characters respond to how your face is in real time, in worlds that look completely real. That really fulfills, I think, one of the many promises of Cinema 2.0. You know, it really has been at AMD's urging and prodding that we're sort of trying to, we're going to push the envelope a little bit more. So we're going to show you something that hints at the next steps. And uh, this was actually shown at SIGGRAPH last year, and it won an award, and it was, I think it's very impressive. So you're going to see this as, it's, you know, the various stages of its development. What's interesting is, can you render a real object? Uh, like this one, for example. And uh, the answer is, yeah, you can. And this, at this point, we're, we're at Star Wars, at the level of Star Wars, where Princess Leia is, is, is giving her message from R2-D2. I mean, this is sci-fi made real. But I think what the most exciting promise of this technology is the light stage data that you've been seeing that looks so good, this projector was designed to render that data. And this, I think, is the future for, uh, for many, many, many industries. And it's just the beginning. And all those kids that were five videos back asking for characters that looked real and things that looked real, well, this is it. It's here today. It's, it's been here for a while. It's just been in a lab. And now it's going to be in your games. It's going to be in your films. I'm sure that uh, as we progress with this technology and as you see the next steps over the next few months that we're doing with AMD, you'll be very, very excited. The, the power of Cinema 2.0 has been shown here today. And it's not, it's not the big things. It's the subtle, it's the nuance that, that Cinema 2.0 allows. I, I really believe that Cinema 2.0 is going to usher in a new level of expectation people have for the, for the user experience. Now it's available in a single chip. It's in a single chip the size of a dime. Tomorrow we announce the next step. We've taken two of those chips and put them on a single card. We call it the Radeon HD 4870X2. So it's two of these Teraflop chips on a single card. If you look round the corner of the room, the team have managed to get fundamentally every game console of the last 36 years. This, if you added all the power of those together, this new system is, thir is three times more powerful than all that technology. It's a, f it's a huge leap, but it's technology available for the same price fundamentally as a game console is today. So it's not a niche solution, it's really a mass market solution. Cinema 2.0, wow.